The day is finally here. It's finally here, man. No more bullshit. Okay? No more. It's here. The start of the 2024 National Football League season is officially open. How you doing? Big sales. And I got to start it. Big sales, man. I love that. I got to give you a double dose because it is the start of the NFL season. You know, no more bullshit about 23, really. What you going to do today and tomorrow? Not what you did yesterday. What you're doing right now, preparing yourself for 24. The offseason is for straightening out the shit that went wrong in 23. And try to come to center and figure it out. I don't think, here, let's do this right out of the gate. What kind of offseason do you think? the Philadelphia Eagles had, give me a grade. What would be their off season when it came to, and I'll, and I'll, and, and I'll zero it in on rectifying the issues that they had last year that stopped them from being a Super Bowl contender. Compare it on that scale. How do you think? Okay. They addressed last year, this off season. What would you say? Scale of one, okay, you want to go grade? Dual go C plus. Kind of average. Or a little above average. Eduardo thinks they rectified everything, and they're ready to roll. Optimism. Nothing wrong with that, Eduardo. And by the way, this is a question you're not really going to be wrong at because it's a personal observation of what you think the Eagles went through when it came to correcting some of the stuff that stopped them from being a Super Bowl contender. James Jones says, elite. We'll see. B minus, C minus. They didn't address the biggest problem. Dual threats talking, I'm thinking about Nick Sirianni. C minus. Okay? I guess, hey, look, I got to tell you something about the Eagle fans. And by, by the way, there was a poll that just came out about Dallas Cowboy fans. They were asked if they think the Dallas Cowboys are going to win a Super Bowl in the next five years. You know what 85% of them said? No. No. Cowboy fans are starting to get to the realistic room, and they're starting to understand. They may win some ball games. They may look good doing it. But once it gets to the postseason, the, the Cowboy fans have no faith in that organization. Can you imagine that? They're a really good regular season team. Really are. Baltimore is in that room too right now with Lamar. There's no difference between Lamar Jackson and Dak Prescott. They're both failing in the postseason. Both failing. Hey, Seals, well, you know, Lamar plays Mahomes and Allen, and I, I get it. Roethlisberger played against Manning and Brady. He still won two Super Bowls. You don't get that hall pass. You know, I mean, hey, tougher quarterbacks? Well, if you're considered one of the tougher teams and one of the tougher quarterbacks, that's why you make the money. I mean, imagine that. 85% of Cowboy fans. Don't believe in the next five years the Dallas Cowboys are going to win a Super Bowl. Here's Arthur. Best off season in the NFL. What did you do, Arthur? You added Barkley and the guy who missed the entire season last year. And Gardner Johnson. Is that right? And then, of course, the draft picks. Is that what you're saying? I heard Bill Calarulo. Big Bill! Say that he thinks this roster is better than last year because of the back end and the talent in the secondary. That's an over-the-top comment. Because I can't say if they're good or bad. And I, on this day, I don't know. I mean, he's giving them the benefit of the doubt. Okay. Some people do give people the benefit of the doubt that they're going to be good just because the Eagles drafted them or the Cowboys draft them or Minnesota drafts them. You give, it's, it's like saying, well, I'm giving the Denver Broncos the benefit of the doubt because they drafted Bo Nix. 
where I'm giving the benefit of the doubt because they drafted Drake May in New England. Really? Well, I'm not. I think you got to prove your shit first before you can start to get that equity. When you show up to training camp, NFL veterans, they don't give a shit what your name is, where you're drafting. They only care can you play. That's a fan's thing. Bill's a fan. Nothing wrong with that. There is nothing. And by the way, it's not a rip, but he's a fan. Hey, I think we're better than a year ago. Why? Because we drafted players and addressed the needs. There's actually nothing wrong with that philosophy and thinking. You're assuming that the Eagles did their due diligence and got the right guys for the secondary. There's, Like I said, there's no wrong answer here. I'm not ripping anybody. I personally don't give you the benefit of the doubt. I think you got to prove it first. I'm not I'm not here when it comes to, well, you know, I'm going to say that those guys are going to – I don't know that yet. I got to wait and see. Did you give Jalen some pass on the report about Nick? Yeah, I did. Yeah. About his meddling in the offense? Absolutely. And why he was a little bit frustrated with the, with the head coach last year? Why he was constantly looking pissed off on the sidelines? No question about it. Nick Sirianni, in my opinion, a year ago in 23, derailed Brian Johnson's ability to be the offensive coordinator in Philly. You guys can blame Brian Johnson all you want. Brian Johnson said that 95% of the play calls were Nick's. So if you want to go down that route, it was Brian's fault. No, it wasn't. He was taking marching orders from Nick. So you can blame Brian, but me, I don't blame Brian, and I don't blame Jalen. I don't blame any of that. That's why I asked you, do you believe they've rectified some of their issues? Um, What's a better offseason, doing what they did or ensuring Jalen and Coach are aligned and, and they were committed to going back to the 22 offense? Duel, I don't really think Jalen Hurts and Nick Sirianni are still on the same page. I don't. James says, became a big Kel big fan of Kellen. NFL's top 100 is BS, CD, and Chase are higher than AJ. I saw that. Okay? Um, a plus, Arthur. There you go, baby. Keep the faith, brother. Wait, Lamb is higher than AJ on the top 100? Yeah. By the way, Big Seals is going to have his top 10 NFL football players here in a second. Taking the offense away from Nick, I say yes, they did. Okay? Okay? That's the way to look at it. You're not wrong. I like Chase over AJ personally. Not me. You know why I like AJ? I want a physical wide receiver like T.O. or Michael Irvin on my offense. I want an attitude guy. I want a guy that you're going to be able to knock people out in the secondary. Jamar Chase doesn't strike fear. A.J. does. He catches the ball. Getting him on the ground is an issue. Lamb isn't better than A.J. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. They actually play in a whole different position when it comes to slotting on the numbers. Sills Kellen work in Los Angeles was amazing. <laughs> mm, it was, wasn't it? How was Rodgers in the top 100 when he played like one series? Hey, Crowley, are you actually thinking that that list – has Kirk Cousins ranked ahead of Aaron Rodgers? Really? If you were going to win a ball game, would you take Aaron Rodgers or would you take Kirk Cousins? I mean, let's be candid here on that. Some of those lists, um, again, like John McMullen said, a little bit of them are a little bit of a popularity contest. Adding Fangio is like adding another first rounder. No, it's not. Hey, man. Adding a scheme is not going to make you a Super Bowl contender. The talent on the team, the Jimmys and the Joes, are going to make you a Super Bowl team. A coach doing his job, putting the proper scheme intact? Yeah. Okay. There's not, You're telling me adding a scheme that they ran like in 22, where you had far better talent on the team than you do. Hey, think about something. Before we get into the topics, you do realize that the roster has regressed since 22. 
it's regressed. It hasn't gotten better. I heard those guys talking this morning like the roster's been getting better. You're not better than 22. And, you, you know, there, there's some aspects you're not better than 23. You're more unproven than in the last two years. The, the roster's top shelf compared to 22. That's not true. You had two Pro Bowl corners. You, you had a linebacker with 159 tackles and the other guy 120. You had a defensive tackle with 11 sacks. Both edge rushers were over 10 sacks. You had a right guard who's now in Pittsburgh. An all-pro center's gone. I mean, you're not better than you were in 22. The roster's regressed. But Sills, don't you think there's an upside? Upside to me is projecting. Here we are again, having that conversation heading into camp. Okay? Look, get this. Here's Anthony. I swear this dude smokes crack. What am I saying that's wrong? The biggest eagle head. What am I saying, Anthony, that's wrong? Tell me what I'm saying that's wrong. Tell me what I'm saying. It's my offense. It's my offense. How do you fix what's going on with the offense? Nick, if I knew, I would. What? <laughs> it's your offense. Makai Becton is a backup. What in the world? And you lost Reddick. What, Anthony, am I saying that's not true? Smoking crack on what? Changing the offense and defense is not going to make the team better until they get used to playing in the system, maybe halfway through the season. Sinbad, that's a great take. That's a great take. Get this, Sinbad. You want to hear something? They may have far less wins than in the last two years. But by the end of the year, if you're playing like a 14-win team and you got 10 wins, does it matter? Does it matter? The records are deceptive. It's how well you're playing in December. The Kansas City was playing like a 14-win team. Do we not agree in December and January? And they were playing like a nine-win team early in the year. They ended up with 11 wins. Did it really matter? At the end of the day, like Xander said this morning, Get in the postseason, dude, because certain teams are trending in a different direction when they get there. The war of attrition plays a factor. Eagles Reddick was out hunting sacks, not playing with the team. Look at him now. Hey, Anthony, you better hope Nolan Smith actually decides to be a football player. Hassan Reddick had a down year, and he had 11 sacks and 60 tackles. You, I hope you can replace that. I'm going to make a point to you here on Bryce Huff. I'm going to make a point to you. Okay? Let me show you something here. Then we'll get to the topics. Let me show you something here. How many people are expecting Bryce Huff to replace and to equal what Reddick has done here the last two years? By the way, please hit the like button. I want to show you something. How many people believe that Bryce Huff is going to? Like John McMullen says, absolutely, it is an upgrade in his eyes. All pro Huff will feast in 24, says Twiz. So, Sills, you clearly are not embracing the Eagles a la Kamala. Can we be unburdened by has been not sure what that is i don't i don't think he will it'll be a failure if he doesn't says james thank you very much wayne tough call can't see it as of now no replacing reddick um you're writing like biden casey showed me that they have the right formula when they're able to let hill walk and still win it all 
completely agree, Charlie. Eagles should get Reddick back. I think that's not happening. Obviously, the news everyone's saying is that Hassan Reddick is not in Jets camp. One more time on that. If you're Joe Douglas, you didn't have a contingency plan, knowing full well that that guy was not going to possibly show up to Eagle camp. And what made you think he was going to show up to Jets camp? Because you're the Jets? What an asinine way to do business. You had no contingency plan on Hassan Reddick, and you thought you wouldn't address it, and that the player would just show up because it was $14 million? Man, that's a calculated error. Who's, who's running these New York Giants and Jets teams in New York? Because what they're doing, they're running their franchises into the ground. How don't you have a contingency plan if Reddick doesn't show up to camp and you thought you were going to dick around with his contract and that now we know it wasn't a Philly thing. It's a contract thing with him and his agent. I'm not playing for 14 2. You need to address it. It was a Philly thing. Now it's a Jet thing. Okay? That is that is an absolute train wreck in New York. That's a train wreck. By the way, today, 3.30, we will have our friend Xander Krausen at 4.30, opening up the 2024 season, the legendary Merrill Reese. The golden voice of the Philadelphia Eagles will join us at 4.30. 30. I mean, you got to you got to be kidding me. Okay? So let me point something out to you here. Here's Bryce Huff last year in snaps. He had 480 snaps. You know how many Josh Sweat had? He had 828 snaps. Almost double the amount of snaps. That's what a starter has. Reed Blankenship, 943. Milton Williams as a backup had 494. Jalen Carter, 563. James Bradbury had the most on the team, 1,057 snaps, or 51 snaps, I think it was. James Bradbury played the most football of any player on your team a year ago. He had over 1,000 snaps, almost 1,100 snaps. You actually think that Bryce Huff is going to go from 480 snaps to 900 snaps as a starter, and he's not going to get worn down when Micah Parsons gets worn down. Good luck. He's never played more snaps than he did a year ago. Those are backup snaps. What kind of playing condition are you in? Hey, running around a track and on a treadmill ain't going to prepare you for that. Why do you think there's a thing called a rookie wall? There's a rookie wall because you're asked to play more plays in a 17 season and a failure than you are in college. Did you notice after week 12, Jalen Carter and both Jordan Davis fell off the map because their bodies are conditioned to play a college schedule. This guy's body is conditioned to play a backups role. Is he going to be able to hold up? Again, projection. He's a pro. He sure has. He's been a backup. He's been a backup. And again, I'm not talking about his ability. <clears throat> I'm talking about here's a guy that's never played the volume of snaps he's going to have to play. Because they're going to start him. He's making $18 million. So now you're going to have to start this guy. 800 you're going to have to play him 400 more snaps. Something he's never done in his career. One year with 10 sacks. Never played over 480. Backup role. And he's going to take over for Reddick. Okay. 
Projection. Okay, projection. Okay. Um. So you think he won't be able to hold up? I'm saying I don't know. How, hey, Alejandro, I don't know. I I don't know. He's never been in that role. He he's never been asked to be in that role before. Hey, Alejandro. Do you think Michael Parsons gets worn out by the end of the year? You think he gets worn out by the end of the year in Dallas? Do you? Do, do, do you think he gets worn out? And there's a guy that plays about 850 snaps. And he's still learning how to do it. I understand, but the tape doesn't lie. He has a motor that wins. On each snap. Okay. Once again, Prince, you're talking about a guy who's never played the kind of volume of plays he's going to be asked to, which means he's been put in plays and situationally, which means he's been mostly put in third down. He's never been put in first and second down. He's going to be playing those downs. That will wear you out just like it does Parsons. This is a completely different role. He was a specialist in New York. He wasn't a three-down player. He was a third-down player. Now, that's important because I told you that's the money down. But he's going to be asked. You're putting him in completely. Now, you're going to go like this. Well, he's a pro. Okay, I, I get it. I get it. But this is not anything he's ever done before. He's never done this. Never been playing on first and second down. He's going to be asked to play first and second down in Philly. He was never asked that in New York. They put him in on third down, brought him in. Limited snaps. Hey, and by the way, does that shock me that he's very productive on those limited snaps? No. Because when you're putting third down, you're putting a winning situation. No matter if you're winning or losing, he's not put in critical situations for the Jets. Reddick's been put in critical situations for the Eagles. Like I told you before, I watched that guy wreck the NFC title game. He was the best player in that game on both sides of the ball, and that's saying a lot with the 49ers. 49ers didn't have a player better than that guy that day. The guy was everywhere. Imagine being dumb, thinking the Cowboys didn't do nothing in the draft. Only dumb Lord Vaughn can be that dumb. I would start Nolan Smith, see what he can do. You got to start him. He's got to play. You drafted him 31st. Hey, man, your red shirt year's over. Kid's got to play, man. He's got to play. Jets had a killer defense. Huff led the team in sacks as a backup. Okay, that's not bad. That's a good number. Hey, as a second team guy, that's why they let him walk. Think about that, Slagger. If he was so good on that Jets team, why the Jets? But then again, after watching the way that Joe Douglas is handling Hassan Reddick, I'm going to pull that comment back because Joe Douglas is looking like a dumbass right now. So you end up moving off of Huff. You end up trading for Reddick, and you're back in the same position you were with Huff, not wanting to give Huff the money, and now you got a guy holding out in Reddick. Joe Douglas's problems, they didn't change. Just the name of the player changed. That's how stupid that is. That's just, look how stupid that is. And what he did. He, he, the, the player changed. The same issues in New York. They didn't want to pay Huff. Right? They didn't want to pay him, so they let him walk. Okay, well, let's trade for Hassan Reddick. Okay? Reddick goes, hey, fuck you. I wanted more money. You know I did in Philly. Now he's not in camp. Hey, Joe, same problem. Different dude. 
Holy cow. And he doesn't have a plan for it. You can't move off him because you need that pass rush. I think actually Reddick's got the leverage here. Hey, you want a pass rush? Hey, could the Jets be sabotaging that so they don't have to give a second rounder up for him? Knowing full well, no matter what, you're going to get a third round comp pick? You think that's what Douglas is thinking? Hey, if I don't play him, I'm still going to get a third round compensation pick next year. You think that's what he's doing? He's kind of sabotaging the thing? And he doesn't want to give the two up? Because if you sign him and he plays, the Jets have to give a second rounder up. I think in another pick. So if you don't if you don't play him and you don't play him and pay him, you get a third round comp pick. Is that what you're doing? It, it this is weird. It, it's so poorly done by Joe Douglas and the Jets. Kudos, hey, kudos to Howie, man. Howie was like this. This guy's a fucking nightmare, along with his agent. Let's get off of this thing here. Howie takes a lot of heat for Joe Douglas drafts. Joe was the football guy in the room. He's an overrated as a general manager. Boy, I'll tell you, he's sure looking it, man. They got the wrong coach in the building, too. I think Robert Sala sucks as a head coach. I think he's pretty good as a defensive coordinator. I'd like to have him in Philly. But when you're talking about him running that organization – as the head coach, and you got Joe Douglas making dickhead moves like this? I mean, hey, I don't think Joe does that poorly when it comes to the draft. I think he does poorly when it comes to negotiating. All the things that made Howie great when it came to negotiating and contracts and salary cap and leveraging, that's what he doesn't have. That's what he misses. That, that, that is a colossal train wreck. Remember, Vermeil, he might, we might get beat, but we won't be outplayed because we will be so well conditioned. Dude, dirt, how many times, Charlie, have you seen the more conditioned team beat the better and more talented team? I see it all the time. You see that, especially in professional sports. You see that. You see a lot of that in pro sports. The more conditioned team is usually the team that's going to be the stronger team at the end of the year and going to be the stronger team at the end of games. Make no mistake about that. I heard the Eagles didn't even interview Dillard, but they trusted Joe's opinion enough to draft him in the first. Hey, man, I think Joe. I think Joe's done a nice job in the draft up there in, in um, New York. The running back, the receiver, the um, – the deal with Quinion Williams that they've done, they've done a nice job. Or Quinion Williams up there, the defensive tackle who I really like. There's some good football players on that team. They just got the worst coaching in there. They need a better coach. They need a more skilled offensive coach. Don't be shocked if that job's open. And if the Eagles do a good job in Kellen Moore, Kellen Moore could be up for the Bills job. And he could be up, obviously, for the um, Jets job. I think those two jobs are going to be open. Howie made a smart move by not giving Hassan a big contract. Um, well, we'll see. You don't know that, DRC. What if your boy has six sacks? If your boy has six sacks, it wasn't worth it. You could say that today before they haven't played any ball. But if that guy Huff doesn't deliver... 11 or more sacks the next two years, it's been a downgrade. And you're paying more money. Remember, you got a lot of pressure on your football team this year. Barkley's got to have a better year than DeAndre Swift at $1.5 million. And last year, that guy had 1,100 yards rushing. The year before that, the guy had $1.5 million also was Miles Sanders. He had 1,300 yards rushing. You gave this guy eight million. He can't just have 13, 1,300 yards. I mean, he can have thirteen hundred yards rushing, because that's not an upgrade. Now it could look different. It could look different. It could, 
situationally, all of a sudden you're seeing them late in games, closing teams out, and you're going like this. No, that's why you got Barkley, because Barkley's a finisher, and he's closing the football team out. Okay, it, it, it could be the same numbers, but look different. Absolutely. Absolutely. Qu quality plays versus just stats. There's no question we see that all the time. Like Jalen Hurts' 22 season wasn't anywhere near the numbers that he had in 23, but he had more impactful stats in 22. I think we all agree to that. Right? They always puck out of the NFC East. Barkley will be a difference maker, Alejandro says. Um, I'm going to make some bold predictions here. We're going to have our 2020 for Philadelphia Eagle as they report to training camp today. 10 a.m. tomorrow is the first practice. Big sales, 2024. Philadelphia Eagle. Bold predictions. But first, I'm going to give – hey, by the way, what do you make of pro football focus not having Hurts in the top 50 players in the NFL? Is that a big deal? Not that pro football focus is a barometer on how good your guy is, okay? But pro football focus doesn't have Hurts in the top 50 players. They have other players in the top. Um, let me see here. Pro football focus. Has Lane Johnson, 21, A.J. Brown, 25, Jalen Carter, 41. No hurts. Um, here's the top 10. Mahomes, 1. Garrett Cleveland, 2. Trent Williams, 3. Justin Jefferson, 4. Micah Parsons, 5. I disagree with that. Chris Jones, 6. Nick Bowes, a seven. Tyreek Hill, eight. Fred Warner, nine. McCaffrey, 10. I'm going to give you my top 10 players here in a second. Based off of last year, that's cool. Um, You should see the NFL predictions. Green Bay versus the Jets in the Super Bowl. Wow. Um, Yeah, that's their prediction. Um, I don't see that at all. Okay, I don't see that at all. Um, what do you think of the Niners having five of the top ten and losing the Super Bowl? I don't. I, I think it's right. I think the San Francisco 49ers do have the top offensive roster and offensive and defensive football team in the NFC, probably in the NFL. I, hey. Just because you have the top roster, you had the top roster in 22, and you couldn't beat the lesser roster in Kansas City. Just because you had the top roster and you have more talented players, that doesn't mean you're going to beat Mahomes. Don't you understand that? You can have all the talent in the world. It still doesn't matter if you don't have the right quarterback. If you don't have the quarterback that can win you that game, you have no chance no matter how talented your team is. Every single Super Bowl, the last two Super Bowls, Kansas City's gone into the game with the lesser talent and won. Coaching and the QB. And players that have been in that light for the last couple of years. As a fan, I'm used to it by now. This guy won't crack anybody's list because of inconsistent play. Hey, think about this for a disciple. Tell me if you think this statement's correct about the Eagles the last three years. It's been three different teams and three different Jalen Hurts's. Is that fair? Is that is that fair? Disciple, have the Eagles been three different teams the last three years? And you've had three different Hurts's. Is, is that fair of a comment when we're talking about going into training camp here? What kind of team are we going to see? Are we going to see the 22 team? Or are we going to see this? Are we going to see... Somewhere from the 22 to the 23 and somewhere in the middle. Can you get to a Super Bowl being a combination of both those teams? 
We got to get rid of the turnovers. I'd rather be a combination between 21 and 22 than 22 and 23 because of the turnovers. Three, hey, three different, three different Eagle football teams. One now was completely unknown on one side of the ball. 22, there were no question marks. What was the biggest question mark heading? That's a great question. What was the biggest question mark going into 22? Would the new coordinators be able to mesh with the veteran leadership that was on the team on both sides of the ball? And it ended up, and it did. Lesser schedule, not very good quarterbacks that year, really good roster. The luck of the Irish when it came to the health of the team, everything was in sync. So many things and so many boxes were checked in 22. 23, you walked into that, question marks everywhere. Were you going to be able to replace the linebackers? Turns out you couldn't. Were you going to be able to place a playmaker in Gardner Johnson? Turns out you couldn't. Were we going to see a little bit of a setback with the cornerbacks because of age? Turns out it was a massive setback. Turns out the 70 sacks was something that you may never see again. It's only happened twice in NFL history. So the volume of sacks went down. Father Time caught Brandon Graham. Maybe the knee injury that he had in high school, Josh Sweat, starting to creep up. The Eagles are starting to go cold on him. There was talk of moving him. Okay? Hey, I saw, hey Wayne, I saw Barkley pick you guys to win the Super Bowl. I think that's pretty good. Harder schedule in 23, Sills. Yep, that, that, absolutely. Had one of the top two schedules in the NFL. That played into it. No question. You know, I, I heard Bill talking about Jalen's play last year. I hate how people segment it. But, you know, Jalen was the MVP candidate for 12 weeks. You know, it'd be great if we only played 12 weeks. He's playing really good. Were they? I never thought they were at all. I, I, I never thought that that offense ever hit and played its best ball. Hey, wait a minute. Like Bill said, he was an MVP candidate. Well, let me ask you this. Did you really think the Eagles played at any time their best ball? I, I didn't. Am I wrong when I say that? Maybe you guys thought they were playing their best ball. We, did, did you think they played their best ball last year? And by the way, they're so good and talented. They're really beating good teams. Okay? The Eagles are seventh in rushing. We got to the bowl fourth back in 2017. Um, we thrive when we start in the trenches first. It keeps the defense, and it gets them three and outs. Absolutely, man. I'm I'm 100 with you. And S. Wells goes. We never really did, Sills. I thought. Hey, you know what, Mike? I think that Miami game may have been their best game. You agree, Mike? Mike, the Miami game was probably their best game. Their best moment was probably Buffalo in the OT, right? If I had to go back to 23 and give you a positive, that Miami team that had all those big-time weapons on it, they they stopped them on both sides of the ball, right? Yeah, but DRC, I never thought the Rams were as talented as the Miami Dolphins. Two 1,000-yard receivers, you got one of the best deep threats in the history of the sport. Their running backs are really good. You got some a pretty decent offensive line. You got a guy who led the NFL in passing yards a year ago. And they shut that team down. It's a little different than the Rams. I get, look, I, I got a lot of respect for the Rams. But I think the Rams got better in the second half of the year. I think, I think they got better in the second half. I don't think they were as good in the first half of the season a year ago. I I I, I like that win against Miami because – I was expecting fireworks and a loss. They blew them out, I thought. I mean, they absolutely, I thought, took the whooping board, and I thought they spanked them in that game. I mean, I thought the best game they played, okay? A la Ramsey and Howard didn't play. That clearly is a factor. 
By the way, that was Nick Fangio's defense, too, that they crushed. Finish 11-6 and six with a tougher schedule and poor coaching. We must not forget about that situation. Prince, yeah, but you didn't straighten that out because the same guy who got in the way is in there. That's why my problem is with this football team this year, your problems haven't been resolved between the quarterback and the head coach. There's going to be a time this year, especially early on, when that is going to be threatened, and you're going to have to keep an eye on that. Tensions are going to be high this year, early, to see how everybody handles their role. You know what's crazy? We're going to find out what kind of role Vic Fangio has when it comes to leadership, and we're going to find out what kind of autonomy Kellen Moore has early. And then we're also going to find out through Nick Sirianni's behavior, what's the one thing you can always count on? Nick Sirianni wears his emotions on his sleeves. Does he not? He wears his emotions on his sleeve. So you're going to be able to know if he's going to be able to handle the pressure. His job's on the line early. Because I'll tell you what, what he does early is going to be a lasting impression for the remainder of the year on how that front office looks at him. Is he going to be the CEO guy? Is he not going to panic? The Eagles panicked last year, front office and coaching staff-wise. They panicked. It was unbecoming of a Super Bowl contender. They panicked. Then the players panicked. Have they resolved that? You would hope so. There's a ton of talent. There's a ton. Get this. As much talent as there is on the team, you have as much potential on the team. Your offense has talent. Your defense has potential. That where it lies the issue of going into training camp. When you talk Kansas City, talent on defense, talent on offense. There's no potential with those type of teams. There's no potential in San Francisco. Shit, I don't even think there's potential in Detroit. I think Detroit, over the last 27 games, has won 20 ball games. They got a better record over the last 27 games than the Eagles do. And they got a better playoff record over the last 27 games. They're, they're moving in the right direction with Brad Holmes as the GM, Dan Campbell as the head coach, and Jared Goff as the quarterback, believe it or not. And, and you know what's crazy? And I keep telling you guys this. I have never been a Jared Goff guy. I've just never been a Jared Goff dude. So what do you think? Seals, why do you think, why do you pick on Michael Parsons so much? As a Cowboy fan, I am firmly believe He's just as good, if not better, than Miles Garrett. That's so ridiculous. My, Micah Parsons gets annihilated on the run. Miles Garrett rips teams a new one on the run. He's a complete ball player. It's not even close. I saw the Arizona car. Hey, you want to watch an ass kipping? An ass kicking? Watch Micah Parsons versus Lane Johnson. He looks like he has a Velcro jersey on. That guy never gets around him. Lane annihilates him. Lane Johnson could walk around for the rest of his life with a Micah Parsons highlight reel. Hey, this is what I do to Parsons every time I play him. I put him on his fucking back. You ain't putting. Okay, you ain't putting Miles Garrett on his back. Not even remotely close. Got to be kidding me. You're a cowboy hater? Get this. This guy, Redline, thinks I'm a cowboy hater by telling him the truth about Micah Parsons getting crushed against the Cardinals. See, James Conner, like the guy from Terminator, is there any the guy's name? The guy from Terminator. Sad kind of son. Ran for 200 yards on your ass. Sad kind of. <laughs> James Conner, the kid who had cancer, 
ran the guy over. Here's Michael Parsons. Here, let me show you something, man. You know what I you know what he is? This guy's gonna be in Paris doing the backstroke. <laughs> hey, here's Michael Parsons doing the backstroke. Hey man, what's happening? Well, I'm getting knocked on my back. <laughs> Dude, are you crazy, man? Yeah, he's the next LT. Yeah. It's like somebody telling me that Aaron Donald's the next Reggie White. Sure. Okay. Here is the big sales top 10 NFL football players going into 2024. I see all these lists out. Big sales minds will have his own. The Lions may win a Super Bowl before the Cowboys. Can you imagine Calvin Johnson on today's Detroit Lions and they can't hip tackle? Shit. Can you imagine Jerry Rice playing in today's NFL and you couldn't hip drop tackle? Oh, my God. He'd have 4,000 yards receiving. You can't hit the quarterback and you can't hit the receiver. Wow. Today's NFL, man. Hey, just to show you, back when I played, 47 players made the team. You know 70 players make a ball team now with the practice squad? 70. <laughs> Holy shit. 23 more players make a football team today than they did back in my time. I mean, 70 ball players make a team. Back when I played, like I said, 47, you know, 47 were active. That's it. And you couldn't hide them. There were no practice squads. I mean, you were either hurt, you put on IR, and you never you didn't play the rest of the year. I mean, get this. You had lesser players, and you practiced more in camp. Just to give you this, when I went to camp with the Buccaneers in 87, my rookie camp, it was 95 degrees uh, temperature, and it was 99 degrees humidity at Pepin Rood Stadium. And we did three days. This is how we would do it. We'd get out in the morning. We'd get back in. We'd go and eat uh, breakfast. Then we would go lay in our rooms, go back out for the noon practice. Then what we would do was sit out there for about an hour and a half, sucking down on some uh, fudgicles or some icicles. And we would sit there under a tent waiting for practice. Then that would end. You'd go wash up, and then you'd go eat, and then you'd go to bed, and then you go to, or you go to meetings, then you go to bed, and you're back at it again. And you did that for three months. Hey, you did that for three months. I'm just trolling. I'm Eagle fan. I just wanted. <laughs> uh, okay, red line. I got it, man. All good. New Jersey fishing. Hey, man. Love you, man. I appreciate you being here. Sills, the goofy new kickoff rules will add a big element to the chaos this season. Would be wins, would be, that's right, agreed. That kickoff thing's going to cost somebody. Do you know the average, hey, relative, do you know that the average point differential in an NFL game is three points? So when you start messing around with special teams like that, absolutely that's going to change the dynamic. Sills, what's your take on the Lions and Cowboys game? I think the Lions beat them. I think the Lions are a better football team. I think they're the second best roster uh, in the NFL. And golf may be the second best quarterback in the NFC. His numbers dictate it, plus his wins. He had a great year last year. How many quarterbacks in the NFC had better statistics and a better record than Jared Goff last year? Can you name me one? Brock Purdy? Well, Purdy got to the Super Bowl. So, no, he didn't have better numbers than Goff. Jared Goff had better numbers. And he had 13 wins, was it? Got a team to the conference championship game? Hurts didn't have better numbers than him at all. Not remotely close. What do you mean, Hurts? Hurts had better passing numbers than Jared Goff. Really? You might want to go look that up, kid. And, and wake me up when Hurts throws for some significant yards. Um. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Those 50 touchdowns don't mean shit at the end of the day. Because that's not the criteria on what Super Bowl quarterbacks look like. 
It's not the criteria. It's not. No, no, no quarterback has 50 touchdowns combined and wins Super Bowls. Nobody. That's why the quarterback, wide receiver getting paid. Correct. Okay. All right. Here's my top 10 NFL players. Number 10. After ripping him a new one, I do have to give him his kudos. Um, he is a good player, but he's not what people think. But I'm still going Michael Parsons at 10. Dallas Cowboys. He's not the best player in the NFC. So I got him at 10. I've got Nick Bose at 9. 49ers. I got Christian McCaffrey at eight. Number seven, Justin Jefferson, Minnesota Vikings. Number six, Josh Allen, Buffalo Bills. Number five, TJ Watt. Number four, Tyree Kill, Miami Dolphins. Number three, Trent Williams, San Francisco 49ers. Number two, Miles Garrett, Cleveland Browns. And number one, Patrick Mahomes. So Mahomes one, Garrett two, Trent Williams three, Tyree Kill four, TJ Watt five. Josh Allen, six. Justin Jefferson, seven. McCaffrey, eight. Michael Parsons, nine. And, or, um, uh, Boza, nine. And Michael Parsons, 10. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, yes. Yes. CBS has a different list here. CBS has a different list. I believe they here. And by the way, well, we'll do we'll do that one here. We'll do that in a minute. All right. Um, where's Lane Johnson? Lane Johnson's not a top ten player. He's not a top ten NFL player. Mahomes, Garrett, Trent Williams, Justin Jefferson, Micah Parsons. Chris Jones, you could put in there. That's PFF. Let me do my list because that's PFFs. Here. Mahomes, Garrett, Trent Williams, Tyree Kill, TJ Watt, Josh Allen, Justin Jefferson, McCaffrey, Nick Boza, and Michael Parsons. Those are my top 10 NFL players. That's who I put in the top 10. Um, Boza sounds like an overweight Italian child. I was defensive player of the year last year. Um, all right. I'm going to make the big sales, 2,000. I'm going to do this with Xander, too, at the bottom of the 3.30 Eastern time hour. But I'm going to do it first myself, then I'm going to get his takes on it. By the way, Merrill Reese will join us at 4.30 to kick off the NFL season. Give me one bold prediction in here. I want to read some of your bold predictions here as we open up training camp today. Just off the top of your head, what would you have for a bold prediction for your Eagles in 2024? Here's mine. Got it. But what would be your give me give me a bold prediction? Red line, Eagles 20 and 0. That is a bold prediction. Yes, sir. 5 and 12. That's a bold prediction. That's kind of where and I think Angelo, I think he did say five. Okay. That Dan will flip flop on Hertz. So according to Jay Brown. If Jalen Hurts has a good season, 
this year and reverts back to 22. I'm supposed still supposed to say that Jalen Hurts had a bad year. Is that what he's saying? Or am I supposed to give him his flowers and say that he played really well and he turned it into something instead of just being right now a one-year wonder? I'm curious. How, um, how, how should you cover it? Hey, hey, Jay Brown, you have no idea how to cover the NFL. No, set, no take is set in stone. This is, this is not a prediction show, okay? We're doing something fun here, bold predictions. He's saying Dan will flip-flop. No, even in 22, I would never have Jalen Hurd. Here, let me, let, me, let me end that for you too, Jay Brown. I would never want Jalen Hurts as my starting quarterback, as my football team, if I'm building a team around him. He's not what I want. I want a quarterback who can read defenses. End of story, no matter how well he plays this year, I won't deviate off that. Is that fair, Jay Brown? Because I don't believe he can. At this point, he can't. Even Chris, um, the guy from the uh, NFL Films, um, uh, Cosell says it. He can't read. Okay. Eagles start 10 and 0. My prediction. CJ will have five picks. Dual threat. Five and 12, these nuts. Only way that happens is if they drink lean and smoke meth before every game. You mean like last year? Sirianni gone. Let's see here. Bold prediction. Josh Sweat replaces Reddick and gets 19 sacks. Damn, I like that bold prediction. I like that. Yes, sir. Jalen Carter has 12 sacks and 75 tackles. Jordan Davis, eight sacks and 50 tackles. Disciple. Both those guys do that. They'll be the all-pro defensive tackles if they do that. And Jordan Davis will get his contract extension. Hey, if that guy gets eight, eight sacks and 50 tackles, wow. You, hey, you talk about rolling through. Okay? <laughs> what, what's LJ say? Bold prediction. Cilio will hate the Eagles no matter what. Once again, folks, big seals don't hate anybody. I, one thing I only hate is Nazis. I don't, I don't give a shit about any – I don't hate any team. Here's a bold prediction. LJ will post by the end of the football season, 56,000 posts by the end of the football season. That's a bold prediction that I know will come true. How are you doing? Jalen hits elite level. Smitty and AJ will both have 1,500 passing yards. Yes, sir. Let's see. Jordan Mulata will score a running TD. Gabe Brown, I actually love that. Can you imagine putting him in, like, the fridge roll? You put him in the fridge roll. Jordan Mulata running like he ran when he was at the when he was playing rugby. Put him back there in the backfield and let him run through that line. Oh, my God, I'd love to see that. Hey, maybe that's another version if the tush push goes away. You put Mulata in the backfield. Hey, let's do this. If the tush push seems that it's not working, put Milata at 6'8", 378 pounds in the backfield, and then you get Jordan Davis as his lead back, and you run those two guys up the yeah, Or shit, you can get Mekhi Becton back there and let him run that shit. You think you're stopping 800 pounds a man? You're not doing that. So you put – look – I, Big Seals has now figured out the tush push. If the tush push doesn't work because Kelsey's now retired, I make a plea to the Eagles. Put Jordan Mulata in the backfield on goal line and run him like he ran when he was in the rugby league down in, I think, New Zealand or Australia, somewhere down there, and, and run him at the goal line. He'll, he'll never not score. Or you can even do it in the middle of the field on fourth and one. You think you're stopping Jordan Mulata on fourth and one? No. 
How you doing? James Bradbury, an all pro again. I don't think that's a crazy one. Okay, I don't think that's a crazy one. I formation. Beckton ahead of Mulata. Man, <laughs> you talk about getting your bell rung, dog. Bold prediction. Pick it does a foals. Oh! Wait a minute. Whoa! Bold prediction. Pick it does a foals. God, he wins the Super Bowl. Oh, my God. Small hands pick it. Delivers a Super Bowl for the Eagles. And Jalen said packing. Holy shit. I like that, man. Goddard has over 10 touchdowns. That's a good bold prediction. I've been begging Malata to run the goal. For Malata to run the goal line since we drafted him. I'd love to see that, dude. Hurts may get benched midseason. Woo! NS Wells with a bold prediction. Hurts gets benched midway through the season. Bradbury and Garner Johnson work good together. I like these, man. Barkley. Hey, hey Xander, isn't this what um, John McMullen's saying? Barkley has 1,200 rushing yards and 500 receiving this season. He has 1,700 total yards. That, that would be an absolute upgrade. That would be incredible if he's able to do that. He's not going to be in the room with McCaffrey, but I'll tell you what, on a team that's star-studded like the Eagles have, and you get 1,700 yards and you add that to the offense, you're going to go places with that. You would love that. The hate just spews out of this guy. And it just won't be honest. Yeah, Dave. I won't be honest to Dave. <laughs> Dave and Sea Caucus. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I Sills won't be honest to Dave Cleary in Sea Caucus, New Jersey. Imagine that. Damn, Sills. You can't even be honest to Dave Cleary in Sea Caucus, New Jersey. Come on, dog. Be honest to somebody. He won't be even honest to Dave Cleary and Sea Caucus, New Jersey. <laughs> Bold prediction. Coupe de Jones with eight picks this year. Holy shit, that would be. Hey, 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 New Jersey fishing. Sea Caucus. <laughs> oh, shit. Funny shit, man. Come on, bro. <laughs> All right. I pity the fool. <laughs> Come on, Dave Clary. Leave, even Dave, man. Sills loves the negative takes. <laughs> what negative takes? I'm giving you my honest takes. Here. I've got some positive ones. There's some positive ones here. Jalen Hurts passes for over four grand. And 35 touchdowns. Look at Angelo. Hey, you'd actually have a quarterback if that happened. There goes Maniac there, man. See right there? This guy heads his, this guy heads the uh Everloo engines. The Everludes. Probably have knowing knowing New Jersey uh fishing maniac, he's probably got dual um Everludes back there. Or maybe some Johnsons. So he's going up and he goes towards like Jones Beach, you know, waves over there, Jones. Rolls it back down, has to turn around and go down to Wildwood. I'm not sure he heads it up to OC. Okay, I don't think he goes up to OC because, you know, OC is not what it used to be. Xander's really not really high in Ocean City any longer. So he turns it around. Then Xander, see, Xander likes down there where like everything's all private and, you know, while the rich guys hang out down there, right? I don't, I, I don't like riffraff. Yeah. Hey, right? I'm not high on Barkley. I believe they pay too much for an older type of dude. Um, I predict he sucks for the Eagles. I don't think he's going to suck. I don't think he's going to be the impact they think he's going to be, though. Stills, with Sirianni in the broom closet, is it a plus because of Howie having the experience 
And if coordinators are better, will you say the Eagles to the Super Bowl? Dude, I don't know how Nick's going to react, though. Nick was poor last year as a, as a leader. Now, they have put it. But, but, but okay, if you're going to put your head coach in the broom closet publicly, what's the, what's the role that he has on the team? Nuisance? Okay. Bold prediction. Sills loses 40 pounds by the end of the year. <laughs> Absolutely not. I'm this way because I love it. Hey, I spent 39, I spent 39 years having to worry about my diet and having to worry about bench pressing and all that shit. Being the strongest guy on the planet. I don't, I'm not worrying about that anymore. <laughs> what up, Jason? How you doing, brother? It is opening day here for optimism for the Philadelphia Eagles and their fans. Sills isn't losing any pounds. It's almost Hooter season. There you go, Shooter McGavin. There you go. Keep rocking the meatball, Sills. Wife added a little bit too much garlic in the meatballs last time. Can't really kind of kind of be critical of the meatballs. They're kind of good and shit. You know, they're really great. They're my grandma's meatballs. But, you know, a little bit too much garlic. Sometimes the gar... I love garlic. I'm a garlic guy. All right. I'm going to give you the 2024 Big Sills predictions. Are you ready? Are you ready? What? Real Italian says too much garlic? <laughs> it's just, you know, and I, and I just it was a little bit over the top, you know? I mean, I love garlic, too. I mean, come on, don't talk to me like that. I love garlic. Bold prediction, Mark Holmes will stop coming around when the Cowboys start 0-3. <laughs> oh, man. Or when they bench that. Okay? Or when they bench Dak Prescott. Right? I appreciate that. Thank you very much, Big Marshall. Cool. All right, here we go. Big sales. 2024 Philadelphia Eagle. Bold predictions. Here we go. Jordan Mulata will be first team all pro. He will be on the other side of Trent Williams for the all pro tackle. Lane will probably make second team, but the two tackles, in my opinion, will be Trent Williams and Jordan Mulata. He makes first team all pro. I think every year I've watched him, he's gotten better and better and better and better and better and better and better. I think he's your best football player on your team. How about this? I'll take it back. He's your best athlete. There's nobody better of an athlete than him. 6'8", 380 pounds. Runs a 4'9", flat. Played professional rugby. Transition into playing football, never had played it before. You're talking about one of the best athletes in the league, not just on the Eagles. Yeah, well, they'll put both tackles in. In my opinion, Jordan Milad, all pro, offensive tackle. Agree with you, Jack. Hell of a talent. Number two, Big Sills, 2,024 Eagle Bold Predictions. Devontae Smith has more receiving yards than A.J. Brown in 2024. Number eight, Nick Sirianni will be fired on Black Monday the first after the regular season ends. Number four. 
the Philadelphia Eagles will finish in second place in the NFC East. Number five, Jalen Hurts will resemble the 2023 passing numbers. Because that's who he is. You're going to have to prove to me you're better than that. You have it in two years. Well, one year had more turnovers. Well, you asked him to throw the ball more. You think asking him to throw the ball more this year is going to result in lesser interceptions? You don't get it. The reason why Jalen was so good with not turning the football over in 22, because he didn't have high turnover plays. Ran the ball more, and they were open because he ran. Now what you're doing is you're asking him to throw more. Now you're going to ask him to throw across the middle. You think those interception numbers are going to go up or down when he threat? Get this. He had interceptions last year, and he didn't even threaten the middle of the field. He created all those turnovers on the numbers, not across the middle of the field. So when you have him throwing across the middle, you think those numbers are going to go up or down? Well, Kellen's a better court. Okay. He's not a better player. Well, Kellen will make him a better player. If Kellen's got to make him a better player, you're in trouble. Coordinator is the is the product of his player, not vice versa. You think Bill Belichick is a worse coach today? Or is it the fact that they don't have Tom Brady up there? I think that conversation is really funny. Well, Kellen Moore is going to make him a better player. No, he's not. The player of who you have right there is who he is. He's not going to get any better. Now, can you do some certain plays to limit the turnovers and take him out of harm's way and not have those plays that they had last year? Well, wait a minute. You didn't even throw across the middle of the field last year. You didn't threaten the middle. He got all those turnovers on the numbers. So when you add that other dynamic that you're throwing across traffic, you think that's really going down in a new offense with a new play caller with a new terminology. Okay. I, I want to see that. I want to see that. Okay. <laughs> Look at Dexter, Josh Allen without Dable. How come no one thinks that Josh Allen is not a top three player in the league? Still to this day, without Brian Dable, nobody. When you look at the well, how people look at him, with the best players in the league and the best quarterbacks, he's always in the top three. I don't know how you see that. And and, and what Dexter forgets, he's won four straight AFC East titles and thrown for a hundred touchdowns in three years. Over a hundred. Only Mahomes has more. Seals, nobody gives a damn because you don't like his style of play. Like, really, who gives a damn? Uh, hey, you should because you ain't winning a Super Bowl with that. They need to work together. Hurts and more. Okay. Okay. Hey, okay. Look, I think I've been pretty consistent with you guys. That style is not for me because that's not the prototypical quarterback that takes teams to Super Bowls. He's a guy that throws for about four grand, 30 touchdowns, has about 150 yards rushing every year, about three touchdowns rushing. That's the prototypical in the last 15 years, quarterbacks that have won the Super Bowl. Around that. Last 15 years, go back and look. About 120 to 130, 140 yards rushing, 30 TDs, 10 picks, 4,200 yards passing, 
somewhere in there. You guys keep throwing that 50 total touchdowns. Nobody ha has fit that characteristic in the last 50 years that's won a Super Bowl. The guy who's had the most touchdowns carrying when in a Super Bowl was young. He had six. So, I mean, that style doesn't keep you around the rim like that. That's why you have an inconsistent play when you're talking about those dual threat guys. Hey, let me put this into perspective for you. Between Jalen Hurts and um, Lamar Jackson, I believe they're four and seven. Let's see. They're six. Yeah, I think they're four and seven. Uh, Hertz has gotten to a Super Bowl. Absolutely. Okay. It's the only thing that keeps him in the conversation. If Jalen Hurts had not taken that team to a Super Bowl, I don't know if he'd be the starting quarterback of the Eagles. Think about that. How important that is. If he doesn't take his team to the Super Bowl, and you can't rely on that, we're having a whole different conversation. We don't have any of those conversations about Justin Herbert and them guys. We talk about their playoff failures. Rightfully so. Rightfully so. Here's another prediction. I got the Eagles missing the playoffs. Here's another one. I got Jalen Carter with nine and a half sacks. I got Cam Jurgens making the Pro Bowl. And I got Bryce Huff with seven and a half sacks. So here's my predictions. Malata, first team all pro. Devontae Smith has more receiving yards than A.J. Brown. Nick Sirianni will be fired on Black Monday. Eagles finish second in the NFC East. Hertz's passing numbers will resemble 23. Eagles miss the playoffs. Saquon Barkley plays in 12 games. Jalen Carter has nine and a half sacks. Cam Jurgens, a pro bowler. Let's see here. LJ says all negative. Jalen Carter, nine and a half sacks is negative. Cam Jurgens making the Pro Bowl is negative. Devontae Smith having more passing re or receiving yards than A.J. Brown is negative. Malata, first team all pro. I got five things on here that are all positive. What are you talking about? It's not negative. Not negative. Jalen Carter has nine and a half sacks this year. He'll be first team all pro. Be first team all pro. It's not negative. All negative. That's not true. Uh, Prince goes, make it make sense. Okay, Prince. Very simply, make your defense make sense. Just make, if you can make your defense make sense, and don't tell me the coordinator. If you can make your defense make sense, you make the playoffs. Until otherwise notified, let's wait and see how that thing looks, man. Because to me, I don't know what you got. I don't really know what you got. Prince goes like this, five all pros. Let's see. Mulata, 
Landon, Lane, AJ, I'm assuming Carter. Till's going to be eating crow at the end of the season. Sills, who do you have winning the East? Bold prediction, James Jones. James Jones, congratulations. I think the Washington Commanders at 9-8 and eight win the NFC East. By the way, there's some people that are picking the Eagles only to win 10 games. I said seven. So I'm three off. Sounds about right. Shit, Angelo Cataldi thinks you're going to win five. I don't think five. I think there's too much of that. I think there's, I just do. I'm just, I don't, I don't, I do. I'm going into this year. I don't believe your defense. I, I do not believe it. I do not. You're older at the corner and you're younger in backups and your linebackers stink and you have no depth in your D line. We'll see. Though that, that's the, the truth, what I just said, you have no depth anywhere on your defense. Well, secondary, I think. No depth at linebacker, no depth at D-line. You're limited in pass rushing with one guy who you're hoping is going to resemble Reddick. And the other guy you're hoping turns out to be a first-rounder in Nolan Smith. Other than that, hey, don't worry about it. There's absolutely too much talent on the offense to miss the playoffs. So you think your offense can carry your defense? Couldn't last year. The coordinators, right? Okay. That's not that's not an awful take. Unapologetic? Hey, coordinators, Sills. Okay. Hey, can Nick, how about this? Can Vic make it work with limited talent over there? Not limited talent, limited experience. Maybe. I'm just being honest here. Maybe. Commander's getting the broom again. Well, don't get beat by the Giants. Okay. James Jones says, Sills isn't the only one saying this now. Moore cannot and will not be able to teach Hurts how to read a defense. No, Hertz has got to learn how to read a defense. Kellen Moore is not going to teach him how to read a defense. That's just going to take constant film work. And I'm not saying he won't do that. But you're about two years away from that. Michael Vick didn't know how to read a defense until his ninth year in the league. Mahomes just started telling you about four years ago he started learning. He didn't know anything about reading defenses until he got to Andy Reid. You think Lincoln Riley? is some sort of great coach. Name me one thing Lincoln Riley's done. He can't even beat fucking Utah at USC. Name me one thing that he did at OU when it came to developing anything. Baker Mayfield? Who else? Jalen was kind of developed at Bama. What, I mean, Lincoln Riley's overrated. Dude, he might get fired this year. At USC. They're talking potentially about Deion Sanders getting that job. Lincoln Riley's a bum. He might be the worst hire in Southern Cal history. That's how bad it's at. I mean, you had a Heisman Trophy winner, and you couldn't even get to the conference title game. And, and now you're going to the Big Ten? <laughs> okay. Good luck against Ohio State and Michigan. Seriously, good luck. Go wipe the floor with you. You know why? He can't recruit defensive players. He couldn't at OU, and he can't at Southern Cal. It's one of the worst coaches on the planet for recruiting defense. He's terrible. Um, and Vic won that. The second playoff game in his career, that's nothing. Let's see. Nick better have the team ready to make a strong playoff run. Or he should be gone before the season ends. Hey, Madbird, 
Nick Sirianni has nothing to do with the success or failures this year of the Philadelphia Eagles. The only way he can have any impact is if he gets in the way. And if Nick gets in the way, that will be his undoing as well. Personally, I think he can't control himself and he will get in the way. It's his nature. He wears his emotions on his sleeve. He reminds me of somebody else. I wear my emotions on my sleeve. I get it. And especially if the ship's going down. Hey, once again here, man, I'm going to take a line from a politician here. All they've done, the Eagle front office, is rearrange chairs on the deck of the Titanic. That's all they've done. White teams leaving the ACC to join the Big 12. Money. The ACC doesn't have... The ACC is in the worst place on the planet, Disciple. You know what that is? You're in the South. Well, shit. If I'm in the South and I'm a football kid and I'm a prospect, you think I'm even looking at anything at the ACC? Never happened. No disrespect, and I love Miami. You know that. I would never play in the ACC. Shit, I left the ACC to go play independent football with Miami. I would never play in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Who against Duke? Wake Forest? Look, I'm trying to play football. I'm not trying to get a bachelor's degree in law. I'm trying to win some games. Get to the next level. Hey, if I want to be um, a guy that works at NASA or a lawyer, I, I go to the ACC. If I want to be a football player, I go to the Southeastern Conference. No kid in the South is going to play in the ACC. That's why Miami doesn't get the top flight kids. And if you do now, you got to pay them. Miami has to, Miami has to overpay what Alabama and Georgia paid to get those kids in there now. Hey, you want to you want a Georgia kid? Well, be prepared to pay a million dollars. Because and Georgia doesn't have to pay a million. They'll probably pay seven hundred thousand dollars to get a kid. Miami has to pay a million. Same thing with Florida State. That's why FSU wants out of that thing. So you think the worst team in the East is the best? And the coach that blew the Super Bowl for Atlanta. Hey, Bill. I think the coach that's on the hot seat in the NFC East right now is Nick Sirianni. Your so-called great coach is on the hot seat. Hey, don't be upset with my bold predictions. I've been pretty – me and Angelo have been pretty consistent with this. Listen, here, here's one thing. I'll, and I'll say it again. Your football, and I heard Bill Colorado with um, with Xander and with John, and I think Xander asked the question, do you think, you know, the football team is better, I think, than last year? And I'm like, and Bill, of course, because he is the flag-waving eagle homer that he is, said that, yeah. And I'm like, where? Running back? Okay. You think you're better at center? Kid, are you even better at right guard? You had to move Jurgens back over to center. So you got an unknown at guard, wide receiver three, even on your offense. And you got a question mark at tight end. Those are just on offense. And that's the prime area of the team. On defense, there's only one thing that I think that I'm going to put my hat on a hook on. And that's going to be Carter. The rest of them? I don't know. And and by the way, you, you, I, I, I heard Bill go, well, they got more talent back there in the secondary. How in the fuck do you know that? Where did you get that from? Because they drafted them. Okay, so you're assuming the Eagles did their job. That's fair enough. By the way, that's not a wrong take. That's not a wrong take. You're assuming the Eagles did all their all their preparation. You know, that's funny, too, because Xander's a, Xander's a Bama guy. And I didn't write this one down, but I'm going to do this. 
right out of the gate. Let's bring Xander Krause in from Birds 365. The guys are doing a great show. Absolutely awesome. 